It's time for member statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Opportunity to highlight the STEAM Centre that's located in St. Thomas. STEAM is an acronym that stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math. The mission of the STEAM Centre is to empower all learners and makers to create the future through play, ingenuity, and exploration using the science and math tools they have acquired. The Centre delivers a comprehensive educational model focused on developing the creativity and problem-solving that is necessary to explore ideas and foster growth. The STEAM Centre creates innovative curriculums for teachers and provides workshops for all ages and learners. They also provide a collaborative space where the public can access 3D printing, computer numerical controls, and other STEAM tools to work on projects and activities. The Centre has countless programs for youth, adults, and educators. There's a variety of workshops for youth, such as day camps, summer camps, kids coding, kid roboteers, 3D printing and design classes, teen video game coding and design. But the learning doesn't stop there. They also offer a variety of workshops for adults as well. With the increasing number need for science, math, and technology skills across the province today, the STEAM Centre is a terrific <laughs> asset to our community. Thanks to the partnership of the Thames Valley District School Board, the City of St. Thomas, and the Dorothy Palmer Estate, which has given millions of dollars throughout our community, St. Thomas Algon is proud to call this Education Centre home. Thank you very much. Well Thank you for the member's statements. The member from London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. On October 19, 2016, the Minister of Health was asked why the people of London must wait longer for orthopaedic surgery than other Ontarians. He said, I am working with the South West Lynn and the hospitals involved in the London area, and I expect in the very near future we will have arrived at a solution. Well, Speaker, five months later, wait times in London are still unacceptably long. My office continues to be inundated with complaints from people who are waiting months and even years for surgery. The ministry's own wait times website shows that Londoners wait 35 per cent longer than the provincial average, and that's after their initial consultation, which often takes months to secure. Speaker, it is clear that wait times in London are not a priority for this government. Underfunding and arbitrary caps on the number of surgeries that can be performed has resulted in specialists closing their offices, even as hospital operating rooms sit empty. Speaker, we are at a critical moment, and if the minister will not take action, I will. Earlier this year, I wrote to the patient ombudsman to urge an investigation by her office, presenting her with a long list of examples of Londoners who are suffering. Whether she investigates or not, you can be sure that I will continue to raise this issue in the Legislature. My constituents deserve more than empty promises. They deserve real solutions. Thank you. For the member, the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, I had the pleasure of attending the Multicultural Canadian Fair and Trade Show 2017, organized by the Young Professional and Skilled Workers Association in Etobicoke Lakeshore. Mr. Speaker, this is a not-for-profit uh, community-based organization in South Etobicoke, which offers young professionals from different ethnic communities and skilled workers and apprentices throughout the GTA opportunities to network, socialize, and expand their professional horizons. The sold-out Canadian Fair and Trade Show brought together culture, arts, and various ethnic organizations and businesses for a day of networking and understanding. The fair also celebrated the contributions of multicultural leaders and their organizations to, towards the success of a diverse social and business environment here in Ontario. I enjoyed meeting a variety of the exhibitors from Humber College to the various uh, international chambers of commerce and local businesses. And I also had the opportunity to participate in a panel discussion focusing on the best practices for how business could engage with different levels of government. Mr. Speaker, a trade show is one of the best ways to highlight various organizations and groups and stimulate networking among them. And the goals of this particular event were to improve networking, especially among multicultural groups, and ensure that there's more business opportunities uh, for all Ontarians. Mr. Speaker, I want to congratulate the members of the Young Professional and Skilled Workers Association for organizing such a successful event, and I look forward to their event in 2018. 
Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Sarnia Lampton. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. One of the seminal moments in the history of our great province was the creation of the provincial college system in 1965 by the Progressive Conservative government and then Minister of Education, the Honourable William G. Davis. As a result, on April 5, 2017, Lampton College, in my riding of Sarnia Lampton, will celebrate its 50th anniversary. Established in 1966 and the second oldest college in Ontario, Lampton College began with just four programs and 54 students at the original Blue Water campus. Today, Lampton College offers more than 90 diploma, certificate and, and degree programs and is globally recognized as a post-secondary leader in education, training and research. In fact, Lampton College was recently named the top research college in Ontario by Research Info Inc. In honour of its sesqu semi-centennial anniversary, Lambton College will be hosting the President's Gala on May 13th in Sarnia. Among the guests that evening will be keynote speaker, Canadian funny man Rick Mercer and the Honourable William G. Davis, former Premier and Minister of Education for the province of Ontario. Mr. Davis actually laid the cornerstone of the college's main building and an event in 1970. It will be a special moment for Lambton College and one I look forward to celebrating with them. Congratulations to all the staff and students of Lambton College on your golden anniversary. There's no doubt in my mind this anniversary is just the start of something amazing. Yeah, yeah, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the reality is in this province, Far too many workers are forced to work through temporary job agencies. They cannot find permanent employment in this province. And the problem isn't that a temporary job agency connects workers with employment. The problem is that people working through these temporary agencies are often seeing their salaries clawed back and as much as 40 percent of their salaries clawed back by the temporary agency. Mr. Speaker, this is simply unfair. On top of that, workers that work through a tempor temporary job agency do not receive benefits. This is unacceptable. This Liberal government has known about this problem for years. For over a decade, they've allowed this problem to not only continue, but to flourish. It's simply unacceptable that people working beside a fellow colleague do not receive equal pay for equal work. That's why we're calling on this government. That's why I'm calling on this government to ensure that this policy, that this, this, imp, this practice that is so hurtful does not continue. We need to ensure that we have a province where workers receive equal pay for equal work. If you're working through a tempor temporary job agency, you should not see any of your pay clawed back. In addition, you should receive full benefits. That is a minimum. That is a requirement that we should have in this province. I call on this government to implement a policy to ensure that people receive the fairness that they deserve. Thank you very much. Thank you. For the member, it's the member from Brampton Springdale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, over the course of this weekend, I had the opportunity to talk to many of my neighbors and friends in Brampton Springdale, and they're all so excited about the new electricity bills that a reduction that they will be seeing in the summer of 25%. Many small businesses will benefit from this cut as a part of the hydro as the fair hydro plan has been announced by Premier Wynne and Minister Thibault this week. This, uh, and bills won't increase beyond the rate of inflation at least for four years. We're bringing hydro rates down by 25 percent and fixing the system structure. It's, it's better for Ontarians, it's better for Ontario, and it's more fair for families. Since the announcement last week, residents from other parts of Region Appeal over the, uh, that I met at the events that I attended all wanted to discuss this great new reduction, and they're looking forward to seeing this reduction on their bills. They under, we all understand that electricity is a necessity, and that's why we're working to make it more fair and affordable for Ontarians. By fixing problems in the system, we will be able to provide every residential customer in Ontario with an average of 25 per cent off their bill. People who live in eligible rural communities and those with low incomes will see even more reductions in their electricity bills. Now available to more low-income electricity consumers are able to apply online to receive $360 to $425 off per year on their bills through OESP. Taken together, these changes will deliver the single largest reduction to electricity rates in Ontario's history. All residents are able to find out how much they will save on your monthly electricity bill and learn more about programs and tax credits to help lower your bills. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Speaker. Further member statements? The member from Carleton, Mississippi Mills. Today, we celebrate the 183rd anniversary of the incorporation of the City of Toronto. Of course, Toronto is a little bit older than that. The Wyandotte people were perhaps the first to live in the area of Toronto. They had a settlement upon the banks of the Humber River. 
In 1750, the French established a trading post on the site of what, we, of what are now the exhibition grounds in Toronto. Not long after that, French North America was conquered by the British, and the site of Toronto became the capital of the province of Upper Canada. Since then, Toronto has always had an important role in Canadian history. Toronto welcomed the Loyalists fleeing persecution after the American Revolution. Toronto survived the War of 1812. The Rebellion of 1837 failed to shake Canadians' attachment to the Crown. And Sir John A. Macdonald's vision of a transcontinental parliamentary monarchy was first developed in Toronto. When the writer Charles Dickens toured British North America in the 1840s, he found Toronto a vibrant and exciting place. Now, at the beginning of the 21st century, Toronto is one of the most populous and dynamic cities in North America. Here's to many more centuries of greatness and happy birthday to Toronto. Thank you. Mr. Stevens, the member from Barrie. Thank you, Speaker. A few months ago, Pat Gwynn from the Bayside Artist approached me with a wonderful and creative idea to help celebrate our nation's 150th birthday. These artists created an exhibit entitled Our Canada, an impressive piece which dominates every wall it occupies. The mosaic consists of 16 12 by 12 inch paintings. Each tile, tile tells its own story about a specific person or landscape. When viewed together, the piece conveys a moving statement about the journey of our great nation from 1867 to today. One of the inspirational people seen in the mosaic is Terry Fox. There's a special local connection to Terry. Every, 37 years ago, he made his way through Barrie on his Marathon of Hope to raise funds for cancer research. On October the 13th, 1980, our city became the first in the nation to host the Terry Fox Run in his memory and encouraged other cities to do so. Other paintings in the mosaic recognize Nellie McClung, Roberta Bondar, and lines from John McRae's poem in Flanders Fields. After being showcased from Springwater all the way to Milton, I am fortunate to have the Bayside artists hang this beautiful mosaic in my constituency office for the month of March. I would like to inv invite all members to visit my office in Barrie to see this magnificent piece of art and to celebrate Ontario 150 with Team Hogarth. Congratulations to the Bayside artists on a magnificent tribute to Canada's history. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Haldeman and Norfolk. Ontario's uh, tobacco growers are fed up with government's mismanagement of the industry. In 2015, the Ontario government took over former tobacco board uh, licensing duties, and today, the Ministry of Finance has the authority to directly hand out licenses to growers and buyers, rather than the board acting as the agent. The ministry also has the right to attend a tobacco farm to conduct surprise inspections. As a result, uh, growers they feel like criminals because this is the government's strategy on illegal tobacco, and they do ask the Minister of Finance and the Premier to, uh, to stop uh, picking the low-hanging fruit. The majority of tobacco farmers, they're uh, hard-working, law-abiding citizens. They want to be left alone to farm. Prior to Christmas, many growers were hit with a $2,500 fine for overplanting, and without details, um, this government would know those fines were unjust. A few weeks ago, the Ministry of Finance held an information session with growers. The meeting was long overdue. They expressed to the Ministry that making up rules on the fly and that those rules change depending on who shows up to inspect their farm. Tobacco growers, uh, they're not uh, bureaucrats. Uh, they're not criminals. And government has allowed contraband to spiral out of control and it's up to uh, all of us to identify illegal tobacco as a problem and to fix it. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank all members for their statements. It is therefore now time for reports by committees.